Hello, I'm Helen from Journal With Purpose and welcome to my latest YouTube video. Today I'm going to be creating some ephemera to use in my journals and I'm going to be using my new product range for this. So I'm going to start off by doing some stamping and I want to do something with kind of a festive feel. And I'm going to be stamping onto some paper first of all and I've got some Clairefontaine mixed media paper but any kind of thick paper or watercolour paper would be great for this. You definitely can stamp straight into your journal but my journal is quite thick and bumpy now so I don't always get the best result. I actually really like making some ephemera that I can pop in a little tub ready for when I want to use it. So I'm going to start off with some of the flowers. And with these types of stamps, you need some kind of acrylic block to be able to place them on. then they just stick straight onto there and I'm going to be using some black stays on ink and this is waterproof and I know that I want to add watercolour to my stamping. So I'm going to take a few minutes now to stamp with some of the flowers and some of the leaves. Another good thing about doing it on uh, some separate paper or card is if you get any imperfect prints you at least know that you can just leave those ones rather than it being straight on your journal page. Before I change the stamp I'm using, I have had questions in the past about how I clean my stamps and you could definitely just use some warm soapy water or a baby wipe. I've got this little brush board here and some stays on cleaner and these little bottles of cleaner last a really long time because you turn it over and really just dab, I'm very lightly squeezing it and then I just rub that on the board to make sure that I get most of the ink off. It will leave a little bit of staining, but it won't affect the kind of usage of the stamp at all. So I hope that helps for anybody that had asked that question. One other thing to mention is when you buy new stamps, sometimes they still have a bit of oil on the surface from the manufacturing process. So it's always worth giving them a, a quick clean before you use them for the first time and doing a little bit of stamping on some scrap paper until you've got that oil removed. I've now mixed up some watercolours and I'm using a set that are Kurotaki Ganzai Tambi. Any kind of watercolour would be fine or coloured pencils, pens, anything that you want to decorate them with. And I'm just very simply going to add watercolour all over these flower shapes. I think it's a really relaxing thing to do is doing stamping and then colouring them in and often what I'd sit and do then is actually cut these out in the evening perhaps whilst watching something on television and I really enjoy having just a little pot of homemade ephemera on my desk 
ready to glue into my journals. And then with this one, I think I might just drop some orange in the center. So I'm gonna carry on now and just paint all of these images. So I'm nearly done with these now and I'm going to put these to one side to dry and I'm then going to do some die cutting. When you're using craft dies you need some sort of die cutting machine. I'm using a battered up Sizzix Big Shot that I've had for years and years now and you use these usually with some kind of patterned paper. And because it's festive though, I'm not gonna use the ones from my range today. I've picked out some kind of festive scrapbooking paper, coffee dyed paper, and these are the ones I'm going to use. And with this die cutting machine, these dies will work on the top platform because this flips open so that you get varying heights and you want to put the raised edged part of the die down onto the paper. You then put another platform, your other plastic plate on top. And then I've got a handle here, which I'm going to turn to prep to get that going through the die cutting machine. And then once that's out the other side, you just simply pop your die out. And the bit that you want to use is what's actually in here. So I'm gonna use a needle just to pop this out. And what you get is some little holes on the back of here. You can just push any sharp tool through just until you release that die. Okay, so I've now got that ready to use in my journal. And then for my flowers, these actually come in two parts. But so I'm gonna start off with them initially with them inside each other. Again, I'm going to quickly just run that through the die cutting machine. And with these ones, again, you just take the dies off. you're left with these really beautiful flowers. What I'm going to do next is use the same dies but just the outside ones this time. And 
So now I will just have the outside shape of these three flowers. And what that means that you can do is actually layer these on top so that you can see both of the papers. So you've then got that red showing through underneath, which I just think is such a lovely effect. And with these dies, the stamps that I just showed earlier, they also would fit in the same size. So if you just wanted to use the outside one, you could stamp the details on top of there. I've now brought those stamped images back onto my desk, which have dried. And I'm gonna add a little bit of gold splatter and I'm using some Tim Holtz Distress Spray Stain in Tarnish Brass for this. And I'm not going to cut all of these out now by any means. I'll probably do that this evening, but I want a few of them to play with in my journal. So I'm just adding some little splatters just to add a little bit to the festive feel of these. So I'm going to get those dried off and then just cut around a few of the images. I don't tend to do this really precisely with the cutting because I'm going to be putting them on a white journal page anyway, so it will be fine. I've now brought my journal over onto my desk and I'm using a flex book and I've already cut out and used some embellishments from my stamping before here and I added some white details on the top of those ones so hopefully that just gives you an idea of what you could do. I'm going to add some stenciling on this page. I think I'm going to use my Floral Daydream. I have used, been using this one a lot. I used blue acrylic paint through it on this page, and I think I've got, and I've used my kind of lily stars there with gold watercolour through. So lots of different ways to use them. Oh, and my leaf stencil is the background for here. And I'm going to use the Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Fired Brick for this. And I'm going to use this to create a background pretty much all over this left hand page. So that's left a really beautiful pattern there. And I thought it'd be nice to put this wreath over the top, so I'm going to glue this down using some Pritt stick. And then I'm going to use my Tombow Fudonosuke brush pen with a firm nib to letter out December in the middle of here. And then on my right hand page, I'm going to use some of the washi from my Leafy Walk washi tape set. And I'm going to run a strip of that right along the edge of this page. I now want to add some of these elements that we created earlier. 
I'm not sure that I'll use all of them, but I will definitely use them throughout the course of the month. So I'm just gonna play with the positioning and where I think I might want them. I really like how they look like that. So I'm gonna glue those to my page. I'm now going to add the date that I'm filming this along the top and then a little quote in the middle of my page too. Okay, so that's the decorative elements of my page complete. I'm gonna add some journal writing about what I'm up to at the moment and how I'm preparing for Christmas and I'll share some photos of that with you right at the end so you can see what it looks like when it's all complete. I really hope you've enjoyed that. I'd had quite a few questions about using dies and things like that. They're really common in the card making kind of market but not so much in journaling but I absolutely love using them so I really hope you've enjoyed that. As always, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's joined me over on Patreon. Well, thank you ever so much for watching. I look forward to speaking with you really soon in my next video.